Hi folks, this is Jason aka Delusional from buildyourownarcadecontrols.com that's B-Y-O-A-C.com basically this is my control panel on my arcade uh, I just wanted to show some beginners because it was a little tough for me to um, kind of get the grasp of things but basically my control panel has four players you have player one, player two, player three and player four so I'm just going to show you um, how it would be to hook up, I have an iPack in there, an iPack 4 for 4 players, but it's very similar to the iPack 2 as well, only it just doesn't have the extra 2 inputs there. So this is button number 1. So let's say I wanted to hook that up. Um, first thing you might want to know when you're hooking up a micro switch, this is a micro switch right here. Um, ground always goes to this one right here. It's always the one that's kind of like on top there. Um, and then there's two uh, pins that you can connect it to. You'd want to connect it to the one that's closest to the ground. Uh, the one next to it, which is, I believe there's NO and NC, it stands for open and close. Uh, basically, if you connect it to this, it's saying that the button is open at all times, and when you press it, it closes a connection in order for it to make the, you know, when it clicks it, it'll make the connection for it to fire whatever you want to fire on the screen. If you connect it to the other one by mistake, what happens is it's always closed, which means you actually press the button to open the connection. So it's the opposite. So you definitely don't want to do that. You want to have it for standard applications. And arcade, you want to connect it to this connector right here that's closest to the ground. So this is the ground, and that's the connection you want. So basically, this is my board. It looks a little, uh, or my control panel looks a little complex at first and overwhelming. It actually took me three days to put it together because I was so meticulous and trying not to mix up the wires. But I chose to use Cat5 cable. Uh, the reason I did that is because there's eight wires inside each Cat5 cable. And as you can see here, there are all kinds of different colors. Like you have the green and then you have the green and white. So it's actually easier to find out what's what. And on top of that, I color coded all the Cat5 cables so that red equals red controller, yellow equals yellow controller, green, and blue. And then the purple is like the miscellaneous ones and stuff like that. So, okay, the first thing you want to do, you want to wire up the ground. The ground, again, it's this one here on the outside, like I said. You could actually see it better there. Uh, you want to daisy chain them all together. Um, you can put hundreds of wires going straight to this point right here which says ground on there, it's really labeled very clearly, it says ground. Then there's uh, player one coin and so on, it goes all the way up. Player three is here, player four is on the other side, and player two is over there. For IPAC twos, you only, ha only have like half of this. You'll have the two over here and the one over here, so it's actually the same concept. Uh, anyway, getting back to the ground, there's only two points on here uh, where ground is so obviously you can't put all the wires into that one thing so what the easiest thing to do is just to daisy chain them so you would connect for instance a point here and then that would be connected to there and that would be connected to there and so on and you do that throughout the whole control panel and then I have mine leading right here underneath the board and then it actually comes from underneath and goes into the one ground here. Um, as far as connecting the keyboard, I got the PS2 version. Whether you have PS2 or USB, it's pretty much the same. You just plug it in. One end here. Comes with the cable, by the way. And that goes to the PC. And then here I just have a USB adapter for my keyboard. That's the pass-through, which is always active. There's no switch or anything with the iPacks. Um, and then there's my... I got a miniature keyboard, so it can fit right inside the control panel. So let's say, for instance, you want to do button number one, which is this one right here. Now that everything's done with the ground, you want to get the, I don't know if you can see in here, but that's the pin that you want. And that's connected to the yellow wire, in my case. It would be the yellow, let's see, the orange on the yellow wire. So you follow the yellow wire down. And let's see, it will be player four, so you can see orange is right there. And the orange wire, let's see, is going to switch 
one. Let me see if I can move the wires so you can see there. Let's see. Yeah, see it says SW1 and SW2. Um, it actually has a number four in front of it. So it'll say four SW1 and four SW2. So I want it to switch number one. So it's as easy as that. You have one end connected to ground and the other one connected to the switch right on the board. Um, to put them in, I would suggest getting one of these miniature screwdrivers. They're very handy for stuff like this because the regular screwdriver will not fit in there. I don't want to touch it now because you should never do this by the way when it's on because you don't want to short anything out. But you just kind of stick it in there. If you've worked on an amplifier for a car or anything like that, it has the same terminal blocks and you simply just tighten them or loosen them and stick the screwdriver right in and that's it. So um, I would say if you're testing it out for the first time, just you can literally, you know, take one end of this, put that straight to the ground, which is right here, and then take the other end, uh, connect it to there, and then have it to whatever switch that you want, and then test it out. You can literally press the button and it'll, it'll work. One thing I wanted to add as well is, I don't know if you could see it on this one, but there's a plastic piece right there. They're all made of plastic. You should uh, hand tighten them if possible. If not, um, I have a little wrench that's basically a piece of plastic that you kind of put over it and twist. Um, but to take these things off, they're actually, once you know how to do it, it's really simple. You kind of take this little part off. They have little holes in them. You would kind of just lift it out just like that. They have holes on the side on either end. So anyway, when you're first putting it in, you put the button in there, you twist it on, tighten it with that little uh, set that they sell. It's like $2 usually on uh, Groovy Game Gear. Again, that's where I got all my stuff. They sell it. I think it's 2 or $3. It's uh, just a little plastic piece that goes over it, kind of saves your knuckles. And you tighten it, and then once you're done, you want to kind of insert the bottom part first. That's usually what I do. And then just move it up and snaps into place. And there it is. So uh, it's not very hard to do a panel. It looks very com complicated. Uh, people don't really know how to do it. And when they see it, they're amazed that, that you built something like this. But it's actually really, really easy. So you should not be intimidated whatsoever. Uh, we can have little to no electronic experience. And uh, of course, there's the forums where we can hopefully answer all your questions. What other things should I mention? Oh, the joysticks. Basically, they're the same thing. As you can see, there's micro switches here. You have the ground, again, they're all daisy chained together. And then you have the switch. So, this is going to, again, the iPac 4. It'll actually say one up, one down, one left, one right, and that's where you plug the wire, going straight to that particular switch. So, there it is. I hope I made it pretty simple. Um, you know, the hardest part is just, you know, making sure everything's all nice and neat so you don't get a whole huge thing of wires. Uh, best advice I would say is uh, don't rush it. Take your time because if you rush it then you end up doing everything over. <laughs> so uh, there it is. If you have any questions feel free to PM me. It's delusional29 is my username on byoac.com. Thanks.